Hey everybody, it's Ben here. Today I want to share with you what I learned designing and building my own hydronic heating system. So what I'd like to do is first uh, show you in general what I've done on my project, uh, then how I planned it out, and lastly what I do differently and what I might still do in the future. So to start with, right now we're in my garage. It's a little bit less than 800 square feet and essentially it's more or less like a house. It's, it's fully insulated and uh, kind of all that sort of thing. So it's a nice workshop space for me to be able to use in the winter. The original garage was junk. It was literally falling down. Uh, so we demolished that garage, we hauled it away. I had my uh, masonry contractor come and bust up the old concrete, which was all cracked up anyways, and haul it away. Then we made a new footing, foundation, and poured a concrete slab. So I figured if I was gonna spend all this money to pour a new concrete slab, why don't I put some tubing inside of it so that I can heat that concrete slab in the future if I'd like to. So once the foundation was in, we put down a layer of two inch extruded foam, both on the bottom and also around the perimeter of the foundation. After that, we put in the uh, the PEX tubing. Uh, this was almost 800 feet of half inch PEX, and frankly, that was quite a bit of work. Uh, one thing I'd do differently if I was doing that again is to make sure to get some sort of a tubing unroller device. It's sort of a giant coil, and you can't just pull it off. You actually have to unroll it as you go. Um, so I had somebody else helping me, which definitely did help, but actually using some sort of a, a rotary device to help unroll it would, uh, would be good if I did this again. So once the PEX was all stapled down, we brought the ends to one central point and uh, covered them up, pushed them out of the way uh, before pouring the concrete. Uh, but how did we even get to this point? How did we figure out uh, what size tubing we'd need, how many feet of tubing, uh, if that was even going to be able to exchange enough heat into the concrete to use it as a heating system? Uh, well, that's where some various tools come in. Uh, before I started this project, I did all the reading that I could, all the research that I could, and I found a couple of uh, neat tools, starting with just reading a good old book. Uh, in this case, the best book I found was called Modern Hydronic Heating. This is by John Siegenthaler. Uh, now, this is an older edition. This is literally a college textbook on how to do hydronic heat. Uh, it's a lot of information in here. It's really good. Um, I've often found that with college textbooks, the latest edition is very expensive, but if you can go back an edition or two, uh, you can get these used very inexpensively secondhand. So I literally read this entire book. It's a fantastic book. Um, I didn't understand 100% of it, but at least allowed me to wrap up my head around 90% of the project. So from there, I started scoping out uh, my local stores. Uh, Menards, Home Depots, Lowe's, these various home improvement stores often carry this type of equipment. And a lot of the manufacturers uh, of the various components actually offer some really nice tools available for you. Uh, one of the very first things I did actually was just take a look at a flyer for one of the heaters that I was thinking about using, in this case, a Shark microboiler. And they just had a flyer on it uh, right there at the store. And on the back, they have a little diagram where it just says, choose your application, um, choose your square footage, and what your temperature range is. And it's just a nice little graph. And I can go, okay, well, I'm trying to heat a garage. Uh, it's this many square feet. Uh, I want it to be in this temperature range. I look right on there and it says, sure enough, that's an appropriate boiler for my system. So a lot of times, just even at like a point of sale, uh, there's tools that can be useful to help you design a system. Uh, Nibco is another company that they design a lot of components for hydronic heating. Uh, again, just some little flyers that I picked up right at the store. Uh, here's one where you can fill in your information. Uh, you say how big your, your building is going to be, uh, what kind of insulation you have in it, things like that. Uh, you can even draw it out and then you send it in to the manufacturer and one of their engineers uh, takes a look at it and they, they basically plan their system out for you knowing that you're going to buy their components for use in their system. Uh, likewise, Nibco has a nice little uh, one-page sheet here uh, where you put in some information in terms of what you have for insulation, how many outside walls, uh, the style of construction, how many windows, things like that. And it will bring you up to a number of the total number of BTUs you're going to need for your project. So essentially how big of a heater you're going to need. And on mine, it came out to 
26,270 BTUs per hour needed. So now I was starting to get um, kind of ballpark numbers knowing uh, how much heat I would need in my project. Another really fantastic tool, uh, again, by a company that deals with uh, the various components, is Watts uh, has some software you can download from their webpage called Watts Radiant. Uh, it's really cool software. One of the things it'll do for you is it'll make the diagram that shows you the exact pattern of how you want to lay out your hydronic tubing. Uh, but the other thing is it really walks you through every step in terms of you know, how big your heater is, what your insulation is. Um, it's kind of a mega wizard and it gives you a lot of information. So if you need to present anything to like a building inspector or anything along those lines, all that information is there. Um, I was also able to use this information uh, for some trial and error. I could say, okay, I want my PEX tubing on one foot centers. I want it on eight inch centers. Uh, I wanna use half inch tubing. I wanna use three quarter inch tubing. And through that, I could see how these variables would affect the design. So by the time I was all done, that Watts Radiant software is really what I use for designing the project, uh, including having that uh, serpentine pattern. And then I followed that pattern when laying out the tubing in the floor before pouring the concrete. So in terms of other things you might be interested in, um, I found a great little online calculator at supplyhouse.com. Uh, I found that very useful. Uh, another thing is there's a company called Calafi. They have some very nice PDF uh, documents available for you. Those are definitely worth downloading and reading as well. So let's take a quick look at the actual components in my system and then we'll talk about uh, how they work and how I might change things in the future.